wanted to be inclusive and we wanted that longevity. Although it's very nice to be emerging, you're not emerging your whole life. People who are in it for the long run were welcome here. been involved in putting on collective shows in the mid 90s and we met actually in a collective 80s. show in no 90s it was like in 95 oh, yeah, I'm, in the, I'm in the wrong decade you're in the wrong Sorry. decade as we usually are as the recession of the late 80s early 90s had waned yes. and things were becoming more prosperous what we found was it was really difficult to find cheap space and there was a lot of work that goes into putting on a show for like a three-week payoff The need and ability for all these people to find a place to show was creating tensions on the edge of the art world, forcing it to kind of reconfigure itself, and it hadn't completely done that yet. walking along Queen Street one day and I went by the Saigon Cafe and there was a for rent sign in the window and I thought you know maybe it's not the time to do one of these big shows maybe we should actually start a gallery the rent was this much and if we showed two artists at once that would allow us to be more fiscally responsible and keep the fees down I kind of lured him in and said Richard we're actually gonna start a gallery The night before the opening, of course, we were doing all the last minute things, and I kept thinking, you know, kind of, we need something for the opening, we need a catch, like, we, we're, we're missing something, what, maybe we need somebody to cut the ribbon. Aiden Urquhart was one of our founding members. Well, Aiden Urquhart's father is Tony Urquhart, who is a well-known Canadian artist. So I called Aiden and said, Aiden, like, would your father cut the ribbon? So we were pretty thrilled that despite our last minute efforts, we made it to the opening, everything looked good. By 2000, the whole Queen Street West was starting to develop. There was a real burgeoning of a mixture of artist run spaces and new commercial galleries. a lot of consternation to the established art world, both the commercial galleries and curators at the major institutions. The blush was a bit off of the collective rose. who had established careers, but who weren't showing enough. The 
gallery was an exciting proposition to us because it gave us a consistent showing basis as well. artists would virtually run their own shows and it gave a bit of a freedom to the running of the place because people didn't feel so encumbered by so many rules and regulations. I wanted a place to show where I didn't have any pressure to be any particular kind of artist. I can just do whatever I want in that show. I don't have to worry about whether I'm making work that a dealer is going to think that looks nothing like the previous body of work and you know, it doesn't work with the gallery anymore. I can experiment, I can change it up each show. When you have 20 people physically invested in creating a gallery space, you get 20 people who then become really invested into the gallery. was like a second home to these people. By about 2008, Loop was already firmly established. As the gallery started to come into the neighborhood, the neighborhood naturally started to attract cafes, restaurants, other businesses. Loop either had to be proactive and start to search for a new location itself or be forced out. figure out your lighting situation if you want to put, have to put a strip line. yeah but you'd have to take <laughs> this drop ce no you'd have to take the drop ceiling down and in some cases like over here the positive thing about moving was it gave the membership a whole new chance to renew itself and to renew the gallery I saw a huge revival in the spirit of loop people really felt like oh yeah loops my gallery like I plastered that part of the wall and that's really important to keep a gallery like this going. Yeah. still around because I think artists still need a sense of community.
things that uh, makes Loop different from a lot of other galleries. We show together, we have two solo shows together and uh, we get dialogues, visual dialogues between the artist's work. With every show there's usually a Q&A session. So the public is invited and you have both artists usually and they talk about what's happening in their work and it has a kind of following of people that come to it. Sometimes it can feel random and then other times something really special happens where the two artists come together and it's almost like they were thinking on the same wavelength for the whole time and they land together and it turns out that their work really matches mm -hmm. and goes together. they know that it's a vibrant scene yeah. and to me the commitment to loop is ongoing because it is always new and creative and encouraging new members as times have changed we fit into the new new situation because it's not so prescribed what it needs to be or, or what it is. There are so many artists and so few galleries and we all make art for it to be seen. So I'm really glad that it's still here.